All right, we are recording, we are live. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Andy Mandel. I'm a broker associate with Remax Advisors. We have locations in Boca Raton and in Coral Springs. Today, we're here to talk about what's going on in the market with interest rates. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on, a lot of headlines. So I got Scott Lushing, who is my preferred lender with Fairway Mortgage. Um, so I wanted to interview the experts on mortgages. So we're gonna talk to Scott. He's gonna give you all the information. Before we get into mortgages though, I do want to take a second and I want to answer the question that I've been hearing all week, which is, Andy, how's the market? What's going on in the real estate market? I know mortgages are, are part of that, um, but just as far as what's going on with buyers and sellers, we're taking it day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute. Um, you know, These things are changing so quickly with all the news updates that whatever I tell you is going on today is going to be totally different from tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So we're taking it day by day. Um, I do have a lot of buyers and a lot of sellers who are putting the pause button on everything. They're saying, you know, let's just revisit this from the smoke clears. And I'm totally supporting that decision. Whatever's right for you and your family is the right decision for you. And I support that. But my job is to continue to be there to educate and to inform and to let people know what's going on now and what's going to be going on in the future. You know, what's next? Um, so I'm doing that with a lot of these video videos that we're putting out. So you can find them on our social media. If you're watching this on my social media already, you obviously have our channels. If not, if you got this in an email and you want to follow us uh, below, you'll have the link to our Instagram, our Facebook, our YouTube page, Google, Zillow. It's all right there. Feel free to give us a follow or to look at those pages and uh, you know, see, the, see the updates. Um, but we also do have some clients right now who are in a position where they need to buy or sell. They have a home that was already under contract or you know, they had a job transfer, a death, a divorce, whatever it may be. And we're doing everything we can to still help those people with following the CDC guidelines and the, big, the best safety protocols. So we're doing virtual showings, we're doing smart marketing. Video is huge right now, so we're doing a ton of video tours. I did make another video about how we're helping our buyers and sellers uh, navigate this with technology, so feel free to look out for that video. Um, but we are still in business, we're still helping people while still doing it as virtually as possible. Um, so importantly, if you're one of my clients, or, then let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you out. We're here to be of service. It's not a sales pitch. If there is anything that I can do to help you, whether it's pick up prescriptions or whatever it may be, let me know. I, I do want to be of assistance. So let's get right into it with Scott. Um, Scott works with Fairway Mortgage. They are the second largest nationwide retail mortgage lender. They're a huge company, great, great company. I can't speak you know, more about all the good things that they do, but I will let Scott answer this question. Scott, if you don't mind telling everyone, what is it about Fairway that's so great and so important, especially in times right now. Thanks, Andy. Um, you know, one of the biggest things that's happening in the market is there's a liquidity crutch, basically. A lot of money is being pulled out of the mortgage sector. So when you're a large company, you've got, you know, basically a lot of liquidity, a lot of warehouse banks, warehouse lines that you can use. What a lot of people don't realize is although Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac buy mortgages, the lender has to first fund that mortgage and close it. So when you show up at a closing table, that money's coming from us. It's coming from one of our warehouse lines. So we fund it with the warehouse line, it gets sold. Now, if that warehouse line comes to you and shuts down and cuts you off, you're not closing loans and you're out of business. So with some of these small lenders, they're being told, hey, you're about to lose your warehouse line. You don't have enough liquidity. You have to put more collateral up. That's why a lot of these smaller businesses, unfortunately, you might hear about smaller lenders going out of business during these times. It is a pretty crazy market. Again, that's why with some of the larger lenders, you're pretty much good to go. As long as they're still in business, taking applications and everything, you're good. Um, we've always been a purchase focused company. Of course, we do refinances. It just those are different. Those the turn times on refinances might be longer than purchases. As of now, our purchases are still going strong, and there's no blip on. You know, nothing's changed at all. It's business as usual, just virtually. So you guys have a lot of liquidity, which uh, I know is obviously a good thing given all the craziness in the market. So there, there's no real risk of Fairway going out of business being the same. No, no, no. We're we're actually an employee-owned company. We're also not backed by a hedge fund. In a lot of these um, lenders, usually a hedge fund or they get their funding from elsewhere. We're a self-funded company. You know, we, uh, if, oh yeah, oh, oh we're, we're in great shape. In fact, uh, we get emails over the weekend. People are still working. We're still closing loans. Good. So Scott, to get into interest rates and what's going on in the market right now, 
Um, there was a big headline at the beginning of last week that the Fed, the Federal Reserve was lowering the Fed funds rate to zero. And I know a lot of people, if you don't necessarily follow the news that much, you might think, wow, interest rates are, are going to zero. Can you explain what the Fed funds rate is and how that affects mortgage interest rates? Excellent question. So no, mortgage rates are not at zero. Uh, the Fed funds rate is the rate that banks lend money to each other at. It does impact things like prime rate. You've always heard of prime rate in association with your credit cards. If you look at your statement, it'll say your rate is prime plus a margin of 12%, let's say. So prime Fed funds drops, prime drops. It also drops the rate on home equity lines of credit, but not 30 year and 15 year fixed rate mortgages. That actually is determined based on the mortgage backed security market. It's all these different numbers in the background, but rates did drop a little on Monday, but not because of the Fed funds rate, but because the Fed stepped in and said they're going to buy mortgage backed securities, which ends up lowering the rate. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the rug got pulled out. There was a liquidity crunch. Uh, all the money was pulled out of the mortgage backed security market to go toward the new stimulus. And rates went up between three quarters and a full percent in a matter of 72 hours. So it's, it, 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 was, it was ugly. People that were getting three and a quarter were now being told they're getting four and a quarter if they were not locked in. So, so what would be your suggestion? If you're going through this process right now, if you have it, you can't, first of all, you can't lock in your rate until you are under contract on a property, correct? Yeah. So you're going to wait until you actually have a contract. And then the question is lock or float, what to do. And... I always tell people this, if you're okay where it is now, whether you're happy or not, if it's affordable and you wanna be able to sleep at night, lock it. Do I think rates will go back down after this run up? Well, they actually did go down on Friday. That's why I said till Thursday. Will they keep going down? No one knows. But if you can now say locking 3.75 for one discount point or whatever, and you know that if it goes to four and a quarter, you can't close, your debt to income's too high, you can't afford it, then lock it in now, if you're good there. So I, I, you gotta be careful, take what you have. I would say refinance is a whole different ball game. Refinance is picked up for about a week and now they're gone because our rates now, they're where they were two months ago. You know, well, let's talk about refinances because there was a huge boom in refinances a week and a half, two weeks ago. It was all over the news, rates were, were heading down, down, down and everyone rushed to refinance. What happened with interest rates after everyone rushed to go refinance their house? Two components there. One, everyone refinanced and there's capacity. For example, there are one to $2 trillion of mortgages done a year and that's what lenders can handle. When half of the 11 trillion in outstanding loans said, I want to refi, all these lenders are like, ah, you know, I was working at 1.30 every morning. So what a lot of lenders did was raise their rates to stop the flow of business. Makes sense, you can't sell widgets that you can't produce. Um, so that was one component, but the main component that impacted rates was all of the liquidity pulled out of the market. So let's say rates a few months ago were 4%. A few days ago, it might've been three and a quarter, a big rush to refi. Now you're back up at four, you, there go all the refis. Because if you didn't refi two months ago, why would you refi now? So that's, it just came to a complete halt refinances just stopped completely. I think the stat that I saw was that refinance applications year over year, it rose like 479% or some crazy number. And for the consumer at home, can you imagine your workload almost quintupling, going up almost 500% uh, in, in a matter of a week or so? It's just a crazy stat. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's again, it, any single business can't handle that. So again, what most lenders did was artificially raise their rate to stop business, not because they wanted to make more money, because they literally didn't want the business. They couldn't handle it. Uh, so what are you seeing going forward? I'm not asking you to prognosticate and predict the future, because I know no one has a crystal ball, but you know, what would be your suggestion to, to buyers going forward here as far as interest rates and mortgages go? So a lot of buyers have to buy regardless of where rates are. People bought when rates were 18%. So if you are moving, you have to buy, you want to buy, buy. Rates are still ridiculously and historically low. We're, you know, we're back into the high threes range, maybe even mid threes for some people. 
we'll see tomorrow what comes, but you're not going to not buy because the rate went from three and a quarter to 375 or from 375 to four and a quarter. So the buyers that want to buy, you're still in a great position. You might even be in a better position because what's happening is you're not going to have as much competition. As you know, a lot of buyers might be sitting on the sidelines for a short time period and these sellers still need to sell. So I would, I would be very excited if I were a buyer right now and still need it. That is, to touch on that, that's exactly what I'm seeing is that, like I said at the beginning, a lot of my buyers and sellers both put the brakes on it and they said, you know, we're going to wait until the smoke clears and the, the dust settles on this. But there's always people who have to buy. There's always going to be people who have to sell, whether it's a, a death, a divorce, a job transfer, you know, something like that. People have to sell. So what I'm telling my buyers, whether you're buying now or if you want to wait until summer when things clear up, that's, that's fine. It's your choice and whatever's best for your family, I support. But what I recommend is don't put the process off. The pre-approval doesn't expire. You know, if you can get pre-approved now, who knows, you might find a vacant property. Someone moved out, it was an investment property and the tenant moved out and they just don't want the home anymore. And you may be able to go in there and put an offer on a property that three or four weeks ago may have had five or six different offers and bid the price above list price. You may, able, you may be able to get that property for a very, very good deal because you were vigilant and you were ready to buy when the opportunity presented itself. And that's really what I'm seeing right now is the smart buyers are get going through the steps right now to put themselves in the best position to find the right house and to buy the right house when it hits the market, whether it's now, May, June, a lot of people don't want to wait until May or June. Hopefully this can all clear up by then, but think about it. There's going to be so much pent up demand from sellers and buyers looking to put their homes on the market to get something under contract that there's going to be a flood of buyers, a flood of inventory, and it's going to be absolutely crazy. So, you know, sometimes now is better than later if you're in the right financial position. What I am cautioning my clients, and I'm sure you can speak to this, Scott, is you have to be in the right financial position. You know, if you have a steady job, if you have job security with everything going on in the market, you know, it could still be a good time for you to buy. If you're worried about losing your job, if you're in the travel, leisure, hospitality type industry, you know, there's a lot of layoffs going off right now, going on. I have a couple of my good friends who, whose businesses, you know, I had to furlough them. I totally get that. It's definitely not the right time for everyone to be buying, but if you're in the right position, you got good job security, you might want to take advantage of the low interest rates while they're here. Yeah, I got two contracts in the last 48 hours, and um, I actually did have that heart-to-heart -heart with uh, both the buyers about what they do, the industry they're in, and their comfortability level, and they're super excited to buy because they're, they're fine there. And I will tell you, in one of the scenarios, and this is what the anomaly going on is, so one guy who I'm getting a contract today, it's already executed, um, the seller of that home was already under contract to sell. He went and found a property that he wanted to buy that's under contract. The buyer of his home backed out, job security issues right now. He's standing there going, I can't close on the home I want to buy if I don't sell my home. So my buyer stepped up and he actually is getting himself a deal. So there could be some um, times out there right now where you could get a deal because you have a seller that still needs to sell. That definitely makes sense. So um, just... Overall, you would say interest rates are still at historic lows. If you had you know, one tip for, for a buyer right now, someone who wants to get pre-approved, what, what would be your, your one piece of advice? Reach out now. I mean, especially if there's a little slowdown, get all your docs together, have, let someone look at your credit, give you any advice if there's anything you need to do in the meantime, but be ready because you never know when that opportunity is going to come out. Pre-approvals, they're technically good indefinitely. Someone goes, when does this expire? Well, at the end of the day, as long as your credit doesn't get trashed and you still have your job, your pre-approval is good indefinitely. As long as your lender looks at your credit, looks at your income, looks at your assets up front, and, and then that stuff continues similarly going forward, it is still good. Your credit report is good for 120 days with us. So I would not stop right now. I would get all your ducks in a row. That doesn't mean you have to buy now. You know, and then you know the other thing I tell people is, you don't know what you don't know. I had someone who said they had perfect credit, everything's great. Finally, okay, you know, let's take a look. I looked. There was a medical collection put on one month before. Their 763 score dropped to like a 682 because of that one medical collection, which was not legit. It actually was a bill they paid. 
They got a letter, we got it removed. But if they were ready to make an offer, they wouldn't have the time to get that deleted. So I always say, never wait. Let's look at everything now, even if you're not buying this minute. So that's my advice. I bet having their interest rate jump up, you know, 40, 50 points, it probably saved them a good amount of money as far as their interest rate got lowered and they probably didn't have to pay points up front. Uh, like yeah, yeah, and also saved them on the PMI as well. And, and frankly, they don't have to actually delay making an offer, wondering if they'll get that letter to get it deleted, you know, so they had some time. So there's a lot of craziness, you know, going on in the market right now. Scott, I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Um, if you guys found this valuable, please feel free to share this video with your network, you know, share it on social media, whatever you want. If you have questions about real estate, feel free to reach out to me. If you got questions about mortgages or anything like that, I'm going to put Scott's information all over this. Feel free to reach out to him. Uh, trust me, he's available day or night, works the, the craziest hours you've probably ever seen, uh, but he is a fantastic mortgage lender. He can definitely make this process easy for you. So, Scott. Yeah. Can I throw one last thing in there? Yeah. For those of you reading this that are already under contract, check with your lender, make sure everything's good, make sure they're economically sound because um, so far this weekend, you know, we, we have a pretty large branch. We actually, not myself, there were three contracts that we got from different places where they actually had to pull their stuff from other lenders because of the issues going on. I don't want anyone to risk losing their deal because of what might happen with the lender. So if you ever have any one in opinion or you do have to pull it and you're in a time crunch, let us know. We could still do a 12 day close, believe it or not. Uh, if you can get a rush appraisal, we could close loans in as little as 12 days if you got all your dots together. So what we always say at our team is the agent that you work with matters. It's really important to work with someone who knows what they're doing. It's extremely important, almost more important, that the mortgage person you work with matters and that you work with someone good and reputable. So, Scott, thank you for always being such a valuable tool to our, uh, our clients. We really appreciate it on our team here. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in.